We welcome you to Houston Raceway Park in Baytown, Texas, where the skies cry and the drag racing community continues to mourn the passing of funny car racer Eric Medlin. It's been nine days since one of our sport's most charismatic characters passed, yet his presence can still be felt. Reminders of him are everywhere, from flowers to cards and even signs. Signs of love for Eric from his drag racing family still grieving. And it is out of respect for the Medlin family and to allow the John Force Racing family the opportunity to grieve its loss while addressing some of those issues that may have claimed Eric's life that the entire JFR team is not competing this weekend at the O'Reilly Spring Nationals. That's why all of us send all of our love and support to all of you in California. Even at its safest, motorsport racing is dangerous and the drivers understand that risk. But as fans, well, we have grown perhaps a little too accustomed to simply watching our heroes get up and walk away from the crash. Unfortunately, this was not one of those times. Last Wednesday, Eric Medlin was laid to rest in Indianapolis, Indiana. The 33-year-old racer died as a result of a closed head injury suffered in a testing accident March 19th following the Gator Nationals. It's an incident that no one wants to remember that claimed the life of a man no one will forget. I was always kind of a daddy's boy, you know. I was always with my dad. That's why it's so special now to get to drive the Syntec car with him tuning it. Because of that, it was so special watching him as a kid. That's all you wanted to do was just race. I mean, if they had a class for a skateboard that you raced, man, he would have one. You know, it's just what we did. I think, I think we're the first two of the Medlin clan to ever be anything but a meat cutter, I think, and, and we picked engines. Eric Medlin, born in 1973, and quickly, very quickly, was exposed to the world of racing by his father, John. Ever since Eric's been a, a little guy, there, there's, uh, I don't know, to me, I'm sure all the fathers out there feel the same way, but there's been a special attachment. Um, I, I remember I used to set him on the workbench at the shop, and uh, he was in his bassinet. He just, he'd been down at the shop and around it all of his life. Through his high school years in Oakdale, California, Eric pursued a different kind of horsepower as a champion calf roper. He contemplated a career in rodeo, but his heart was at the racetrack. In 96, after two and a half years studying mechanical engineering in college, he was ready to make the jump to the real world. He called me one day, and I'd gone to work for Force, and he said, uh, I want to go to work on a race car. And I said, no, you don't. He says, I'm going to work somewhere out there. He says, I'd rather do it with you. And I said, well, that's, that's all I needed to hear. So he laid the books on the table. We still have them. We still have those textbooks. And he says, I'm going to go race. Eric worked for eight years as a crewman on funny cars, driven by both Tony Pedragon and John Forrest, and was part of 49 wins. After winning the 2003 Powerade Championship, Pedragon left John Forrest Racing to start his own team. Force was left with an empty driver's seat, which he chose Eric Medlin to fill. Thanks to years of watching and studying his teammates, Medlin took to the funny car instantly, qualifying number two in his first start at the 2004 Winter Nationals. Loving Eric Medlin. He knows how to negotiate a car down a racetrack. It's like he has tons of experience. I don't know where it comes from, but uh, maybe just from the heart. Medlin's heart was evident from the first time he turned a wheel. Early on, the rides he took in a funny car were reminiscent of the kind of ride he'd left behind in the rodeo. Eric always tried to get every single ounce of performance out of the car. Eric has a special talent for feeling the car. And we have won more rounds and made more trips down the racetrack because he can sense where the car is better than, than anybody I've ever worked with. And I'm being honest, I've worked with some extremely talented drivers. And Eric Medlin has his first win as a professional. Look at Dad. He is loving life right now. Everybody on the side of this car believed in an old hillbilly like me. And that's not a cliche from John, but uh, it means a lot that they'll believe in somebody like that. And hey, America, dreams can't come true. Don't ever stop dreaming. Over three full seasons in the funny car ranks, Eric Medlin took home an impressive six victories and never finished out of the top five in point standings. In spite of all the excitement and glory he found driving a funny car, nothing thrilled Eric more than having his father, John, as his crew chief. John and Eric had a remarkable bond, not as teacher and student or crew chief and driver, but his friends. 
he always is, was my hero growing up, you know. Everything he did, man, was, was top notch to me. So to look out the windshield and see, you know, you see all the stuff. You see NHRA, you see Ford Mustang, you see all the things. And the last thing you see is your dad giving you the thumbs up and pounding on the hood saying, go get him. And man, I'm telling you what, there's not a feeling in the world that compares to that. In Eric Medlin's short 33 years on earth, he touched the lives of too many to count. His incredible smile and love for fun were his gifts to everyone with whom he came in contact. Perhaps just as tragic as the loss of Eric is that those who never had the pleasure of meeting him will never get to experience his kindness, his playfulness, and his genuine love for his family and friends. The world and the world of racing were made better because he was here. We will forever miss Eric Midland. Paul Page reporting more than 1,000 people were on hand where John Force eulogized Eric Medlin with a story. One time Eric had girl troubles and he came to me. I walked him out in the shop and said, look at that car, Eric. That car will always love you. It'll fix you when you need fixing. I said it will always protect you. And I was wrong. For that, I'm sorry, Eric. Well, here at Houston, our first opportunity to pay respects came when Gary Selzy took to the racetrack and made a solo pass next to a wide open lane, a lane that would have been filled by 33-year-old Eric Medlin. And needless to say, it was a very touching, a very tender moment indeed. 